Hello, this is Renee Rabbit of Rabbit Design, and this video is for my chief architect family of users. Uh, this is a subsequent video for a post that was on the Users of Chief Architect Facebook group, and then we're talking about making paneled walls. And there's a lot of discussion about using the Backsplash tool and Material Region tool. But for this particular instance, I really prefer using the Cabinet tool. You can create some really dynamic paneling options that can be saved to your library to use for years to come. And so before I get into that, I want to discuss the Backsplash tool and kind of its well, it's advantages for certain things and also it's disadvantages for this particular use case. And so the first thing I'm going to do is this section over here is using the backsplash tool to start creating some paneling. And I'm going to switch my rendering view from a PBR view, physically based view, to a vector view. And what we're going to see immediately is that where I've used the backsplash tool, I've got these vector lines where the backsplash tool has crossed itself. So, which tells me that I kind of need to be able to snap to inside of these panels if I want to get rid of those vector lines. But even so, even if I do that, um, well, actually it works quite well. If I snap in between a section, um, you can see those vector lines kind of disappear. Whereas just by default, if I line these up using the method that I use for these cabinets, those vector lines don't exist. So already you can kind of guess that this is going to take a lot longer if I want to get a dynamic paneled wall using the backsplash tool. Now if I was just doing some vertical runs or just horizontal runs and, I, and they're all evenly spaced, it's really quick to use the backsplash tool. We just drop this in, set the width of this particular tool, set the depth of this tool in its dialog box, and then we can use our multiple copy and, and drag it along the wall and very quickly create some vertical or horizontal panning paneling uh, and that's a very dynamic way of doing it as well it's a very fast way of doing it but it doesn't allow us to change that very easily so that if I've got a client they've decided that they want to change the thickness of that backsplash and the spacing and maybe change spacing in between it's not quite as fast or dynamic so the next part of this is in an elevation view uh, we've got some challenges here. Say I want to change this panel. I'm going to click on just one of the side parts here and I'm going to go, let's say it's going to be a five inch um, board, if you will. And then I want to change the spacing of that five inch board. And I think, okay, I'm going to click on this section right here. I'm going to make it 16 inches away. What you're going, actually, let's make it a little bit more. Let's make it 18 inches away. What you're going to see is it's automatically resized my backsplash as opposed to the spacing in between and holding my dimension on the backsplash. And so the way around that is I've got to shift select my backsplash. But what happens is it no longer gives me that temporary dimension in between, which means now I need to pull a dimension string to be able to specify my distance between these backsplashes and also lock the width of the backsplash itself, short of just turning it into a symbol and bringing it back into the plan and dropping it in place. So the backsplash tool kind of has its drawbacks there, which means I'd have to have a bunch of dimension strings going left to right and since this is paneling that's going um, up and down vertically as well, I'd have to have dimension strings in that direction as well. So a few challenges there. The next part of this particular tool that people can get lazy on is I can stretch this backsplash past the elevation point and it's going to auto cut the end of this. And in 3D, we'll take a look as well. We're going to see as I select this, you can see it's dragged past this point, but it's nice because you know, it, it auto cuts. We don't see it outside of the wall. Perfect, right? The only issue with that is in plan view. If I've got backsplashes turned on, you're going to see that backsplash is pulled way outside here. And the last issue I have with the backsplash tool is I don't have any way of editing this in plan view. So a few challenges there, a few things I don't like about using this tool. Now let's take a look back in 3D view and I'm going to switch back to our physically based rendering mode. And we're going to take a look at a couple different paneling options I've created here. So let's just open one of these up. We're going to be in the, the specification or what I call the data box, DBX box. And we're going to see how I created this particular backsplash. We've got a couple different sections here. If we shrink down this whole thing, we're going to see we've got a horizontal section, which is the main body here. 
and then we can subsequently shrink down. We've got a couple other different sections here. We've got three vertical sections, and then we've got two um, vertical separations. And so what I've done is the left and right sections are just one single style. And I'm using a panel for that style. You can see here a door panel. And that panel, this is kind of something that's a really strong um, dynamic portion of this using a cabinet symbol is that this can be any panel I create. I can create a, a panel that's in the likeness of an OG style. I can create a panel that has a, you know, a nice radius to it. And all of those can be applied using this method. So you can create a bunch of different paneling options for wall paneling that's gonna be very, very dynamic. And we're going to get some parametric stretching, which is you know one of the fantastic parts of Chief Architect. So the next part of this is I've got this section right here, which has a bunch of um, horizontal separations. And the, the part of this that's kind of interesting is that I've, I've created some openings here. I've created some openings in these horizontal sections, like this opening right here. And that allows me to see through to the wall beyond. And the only way that that works is by going to, you know, underneath the cabinet side designation, we're in front sides back in the cabinet data box. And I'm gonna to go to the back side here and I'm gonna make sure that the side type is just match front. And that makes it so that the back of this cabinet is matching the front of this cabinet, which makes it so I can see right through to that wall beyond. The last bit of this that's really important is that now I can use in my edit toolbar, which by default is in your bottom toolbar tray, I've got the add object to style palette tool. And let's just create a new one. We'll call it test. And when I'm adding this to a style palette, I'm going to set properties. I'm gonna make sure select all is selected for this instance so that no matter what, if I drop in a full height cabinet here, and let's just get to my cabinet tools, drop this full height cabinet here, I can take this test and I can click on this and look what happens. It immediately transforms it to that wall panel. What a fantastic way of doing this. Now I have my left and right vertical sections under door drawer in the data box set to lock width so that when I stretch this, this is uniformly going to be stretched. It's parametrically going to be stretched so that I maintain the width of these side panels. And so the last thing that I need to do when I'm stacking these up next to each other, oh, one last bit of this is the backsplash tool doesn't carry a bumping. It doesn't really have any kind of BIM based um, feature built into it. So when I copy and paste this and drag them over and then try to drag it back, look at that. It stops, I've dragged past point. But to a certain extent, this bumping exists so that when I let go of my mouse, it's going to bump up right next to that other cabinet, which is a very powerful feature of this software, and it makes making a panel to wall really seamless. Look at that. Easy, 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 easy. So the last bit of this is that you can create some really powerful door symbols and those door symbols can be used to create some very dynamic paneling and so you can see here I've got a couple different slatted panel this is using that same um, style palette tool and look at that just a click of the button and I can easily transform sections of doors let's bump this up to the next one and actually I think I had these reversed There we go, we'll make this the panel two, this one panel one, look at that, that lines up just fine. And then I can also just do this guy as well and I'll make sure that this guy is bumped up to the last one. And I can switch out the door and reverse it if I like. And quite easily create some really dynamic looking wall paneling. So I hope this help some people out there and just to kind of open up their mind and envision some really powerful creative ways of creating paneling and being able to save it to your library and use it for years to come and so um, if you like this video please subscribe i'll try to put out more videos as time becomes available to me and happy saturday to everybody thanks